Hey, what is up, motos? It is TC Crew here with a new video for you. Welcome to part three of season one of What If Deku Was Miles Morales Spider Man. I just want to greet you guys by just saying, sit back and relax. You're in for a treat. So begin. A disheveled looking man got out of a yellow sleeping bag. He stood up as he watched his class talking amongst themselves. With a side man with a black hair picked up his sleeping bag. If you're here to make friends, you can leave. You're here to learn how to be a hero. Aizawa said with a mild annoyance as the class quieted down. It took you three seconds to quiet down. You will need to work on that if you want to be a hero. Excuse me, sir, but who are you? Ida asked as he stood up and raised his hand. I am Shota Aizawa, and I will be your homeroom teacher for the next three years. Change into your PE uniform and meet me at the field. The tired-looking teacher said as he left the class. The students looked at each other in confusion. Everyone had asked that they would be attending orientation on the first day of school. But ten minutes later, the class arrived at the field. When they got to the field, they didn't see their teacher there. Just before they could start talking, their teacher revealed himself. If you want to be heroes, you will have to be quicker than that. A hero needs to be faster. The teacher grumbled as he looked at his watch. We are going to be doing an assessment test to see where you are. Excuse me, sir. What about orientation? Uraraka asked nervously. UA prides itself on being a school that doesn't restrict itself to tradition. If you want to be a hero, then you don't have time for it. Shota said with an annoyed tone. Bakugo, what was your furthest throw back in Moto school? It was about 60 meters, sir. Bakugo responded with a grumble. Try using your quirk this time. It's irrational for schools to ignore quirks when you're teaching people. The pro hero said with a tired voice. A tiny little drone shaped like an octopus flew around the field as it recorded what the students were doing. The drone would send what it recorded back to the person controlling it. The drone made sure to collect data on the future heroes. The drone even caught All Might watching the exam in the background. After it recorded enough information on Class 1A, the drone started to head into UA. The drone made sure to cloak itself to avoid being noticed by the security systems at UA. Rather than looking at the students, the drone starts to search the area for the location where UA stores its records and class schedule. Once it found what it was looking for, it slipped into the room and started to download the information from a computer. The robot was unable to acquire the information but what quirks Class 1A had. Just before Aizawa could issue have his students move into the next part of the assessment, the alarm started to go off. This required the black-haired teacher to stop the assessment and bring his students back to the classroom. The next day, Class 1A was waiting for the class to begin. It was the early afternoon. The class was waiting for their teacher to walk in. Aizawa had just left saying that he was not going to teach the Hero Foundation course. Some of the students were guessing that it might be present Mike or Ectoplasm. Others were wondering if it would be All Might since uh, there were rumors that he was a teacher at UA. However, there was the specter of the alarm from yesterday. Everyone was concerned that someone had tried to break in into UA. According to the announcement that Principal Nezu made earlier in the day, it was a false alarm. With the credible rumors that the villain All for One had made an alliance with the Green Goblin, the principal had decided to increase security around the school. The reporters seemed to indicate that the villain team that the Green Goblin was the leader of was operating in Japan to cement the alliance. The hero schools in Japan had increased their security because the villain team was known to attack schools for hostages. Unlike All for One, no one seemed to know what the villain team that the Goblin led wanted. They were called the Sinister Six because of the public's view on them. The villains were known for attacking hero schools in an attempt to reduce the number of heroes. The 
that would end up becoming pro-heroes. The Rodin decided that any teacher that wasn't actively teaching would be patrolling the campus in a rotation to find any evidence of tampering. The conversation that Class 1A was having shifted to what type of class they would have. Before they could make any progress with the conversation, they heard loud footsteps approaching. The class fell silent as they heard the footsteps. The footsteps stopped as the door was shoved open. I'm walking through the door like a normal person! All Might said with his trademark smile on his face. The class was excited to see that their teacher was All Might. Before 1A could get too excited, the blonde-haired teacher continued to speak. Today, I will be doing simulation training. I want everyone to meet me at the fake city. The symbol of peace said in a happy tone, Before we start, you have to look the part. As All Might finished, he pressed a button on a remote, and suitcases appeared from the wall behind the students. The teacher then proceeded to leave the classroom as the students went to grab the suitcase with their name on it. The class was excited to find out what kind of activity they would be doing. As the students went to the fake city, it was easy to notice the increased security. Several of the teachers that Class 1A had were past them. When the class arrived there, they noticed that All Might was waiting for the students to arrive. The pro hero was examining the students as they entered. Despite the smile, the students could tell that the blonde hero was nervous. All of you look like pro heroes already, the teacher said excitedly. Today we will do hero versus villain training. The class stopped talking as their teacher started the class. They weren't sure what to expect with the training. Midoriya noticed that the class was confused as to why they were going to be fighting in a building. The green-haired boy remembered what Spider-Man had told him. A smart villain will stick to the shadows to avoid detection. Most villain activity isn't recorded by the media. Most villains stick to the shadows where the law doesn't see them. All Might said with confidence. The media usually records the major fights or the aftermath of the attack. The teacher paused briefly to make sure the students were paying attention. The class was silent as they considered what their teacher was saying. No one wanted to mention how two of their classmates had survived the villain attack. A deafening silence occurred as the class waited for the teacher to continue. As many of you know, young Midoriya and young Bakugo survived a villain attack. According to the hero of the scene, the two of them had the misfortune of encountering the villain. All Might said in a serious tone, The villain created a situation where the light of society couldn't reach him. He used his power to harm the innocent people. Today's exercise will be the first step into preparing you to deal with villains like the Green Goblin. Everyone looked at the two students that All Might mentioned with concern. All of them knew the basics of the attack, however, the class wondered if those two were okay. Even the number one hero looked at the two students with concern. No one knew how to bring up whether or not they were okay. The teacher tried to move past the doom and gloom as he continued his speech. It is important to remember why a hero should smile. You should smile to trick the fear in your heart. You should also remember to smile to reassure the victims of the attack. All Might said as he tried to use a cheerful tone. I will be separating everyone into teams of two. One team will be the heroes, and the other team will be the villains. The class started to get excited as they heard what they would be doing. Despite the example used, the students wanted to keep smiling in an attempt to follow the example of their teacher. The teacher pointed to a box on the table. You will be picking your teammate randomly. This will be done to simulate how you might get assigned a random hero in the field. The symbol of peace said calmly. Once you have your teammate, I will then pick the team that will be the hero, and which one will be the villain. Everyone excitedly waited for their turn to find out which team they would be on. Unbeknownst to them, a small drone was observing the class from afar. The drone seemed to position itself in such a way that it could pick up which teams the students would end up on. Once the teams were assigned, the blonde-haired teacher continued his explanation of the exercise. The villain team will have five minutes to place the bomb in the building. 
During that time, both the hero and the villain team will have five minutes to plan. The blonde-haired teacher said in a pleasant tone. The hero team will have a layout of the building so that they can better devise a plan to deal with the bomb. The class stayed silent as they waited for their teacher to continue. One A was excited for how each team was supposed to win. Despite their excitement, there was still tension in the air. It was almost like the class was expecting something bad to happen. The first way for the hero team to win is to touch the bomb. The other way is to trap the villain team with the captured tape. All Might said with his trademark smile on his face and a happy tone of voice. The villain team wins if they manage to hold off the heroes for 10 minutes or capture the hero team. Despite the fact that we are going for realism, please remember to avoid causing serious harm to your classmates. Everyone in the class started looking at each other excitedly. Everyone wanted their chance to show that they had the potential to be heroes. For example, Bakugo, he was waiting for his chance to show that he was strong enough to prevent what happened during middle school. When he looked at Midoriya, he saw a similar look. Both of them had trained their abilities so that they could save people. The hero team will be Team A! The number one hero said pleasantly as he reached into the box to determine who would be the villain team. The villain team will be Team D. Villain team, you have the time to place the bomb and decide what your strategy will be to fight the hero team. Hero team, you will have a chance to discuss your plan with each other. The rest of us will be watching from the observation room. I will intervene if I feel the match will leave someone with a serious injury. Bakugo and Ida took the bomb inside the building. The rest of the class left to the observation room. The only two left outside of the building were Midoriya and Uraraka. The green-haired boy felt uneasy as he considered what the best approach would be. Once the villain team placed the bomb in the building, the drone moved over so they could focus in on the bomb. For a brief moment, a purple cloud of mist surrounded the bomb. No one noticed this strange event. In fact, the drone was joined by several other drones. It was almost as if someone wanted to capture what would happen from multiple angles. As the five minutes drew to a close, the emerald-eyed boy's spider sense started to warn him that there was some sort of danger. But before we continue, I would like to say a message from our sponsors. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Staying safe online is an ever-growing difficulty and hackers could exploit you. NordVPN allows you to change your IP address, making you harder to track, securing your privacy. In addition to providing you with safe passage through the web, you can also expand the research of your favorite streaming services. Are you tired of going through two or three or even four streaming services to watch your favorite anime? Well, with NordVPN, you can change your country and be able to in shows like My Hero Academia, Naruto, and many others on your favorite streaming services with just a press of a button. Check out the link in the description to get 72% off when buying for two years at $3.29 a month. This deal is for a limited time. And thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Alright hero team, the five minutes are up. You may enter the building. Remember, you have to touch the bomb to win hero team. All Might said calmly as he started the timer for the exercise. Remember, please do not use excessive force on each other. With that, the hero team entered the building through the front door. However, before anyone noticed, the connection to the observation room was cut. Everyone in the observation room noticed a new line that replaced both teams. Everyone was nervous as they considered what this new line could be. The one thing that was clear was that this new line didn't want the students doing the exercise to hear what they were about to say. Hello, symbol of peace. Your nemesis all for one sends his regards. He wanted you to rush over to where your students are in an attempt to save them. The distorted voice said over the line. However, the Sinister Six had a different idea. They've isolated the part of the campus you're in so that no one outside of the area will know what's going on. We also swapped the bomb for a real one. 
If anyone tries to leave the room or contact anyone outside of the room, the bomb goes off. Dread filled the air as the class digested what was said. This voice seemed serious. It also seemed to radiate pure malice and killing intent. Most of the students were shaking in fear from the voice. They were also concerned about what would happen with the bomb. The symbol of peace smile disappeared for the first time. See, Spider-Man always managed to find a way to save people, even in dire situations like this one. Now, symbol of peace, what will you do to try and save everyone? The voice said, almost as if it was taunting everyone in the room to try and do something. Will you watch your classmates die, or will you try to save them? Let's see how you handle this experiment. Let's see how long you can keep smiling for number one hero. It seems the spider trained the blonde haired boy and the green haired boy well. I suppose this wouldn't be that entertaining if they couldn't pick up something this obvious. Before All Might could respond, the line went dead. The drones moved in front of the camera, almost as if they no longer cared about staying hidden. 1A looked at their teacher, unsure of what to do. A timer appeared on the screen, showing how long it would take before the bomb went off. The symbol of peace grimaced as he watched the situation unfold. He tried to think of something he could do, but everything seemed so hopeless. He'd been caught flat-footed, and now four of his students would pay the price because he underestimated the villains. Your classmates should realize that they lost communication with us soon. All we can do is hope that they realize something is amiss and try to get help. All Might said as he watched the situation unfold in horror. We might have a shot at attracting the rest of UA's attention if we try to cause a disturbance that impacts the school on a large scale. The moment Izuku entered the building, his spider sense started going haywire. He paused for a moment as a memory came up of Spider-Man explaining the difference between the sixth sense warning him of attacks and actual danger. Remember, Midoriya, if your version of the spider sense seems to leave you with a feeling of impending doom, then make sure to heed it. Spider-Man said calmly. Even though you might not realize it, your abilities are picking up something dangerous that you don't realize is there. The faster you identify it, the faster you can react to it. The green-haired boy snapped out of it as he realized that something dangerous was nearby. However, despite this, he couldn't figure out what was causing this sense to go haywire. His teammate wasn't the source, and he doubted his other classmates meant any serious harm to him. However, his instincts told him to mention this to his teammate, since another pair of eyes would be more efficient at discovering what the problem was. Uraraka, something isn't right. When we split up, please be on the lookout for something that doesn't seem right. Midoriya explained nervously. I get the feeling that there is some sort of danger nearby. This almost feels like I'm back at middle school again. All right, Deku. Any idea of what might be the source? Uraraka said as she looked around in terror. How could the heroes have missed something? I think the villains changed something after the building was inspected. The pro hero who trained me warned me about some of his vi villains. Midoriya said with a nervous stutter. One of the villains was smart enough to change something once it passed inspection. Another was capable of confusing your senses so you couldn't tell what was real and what was fake. As they heard the sounds of that blonde-haired boy's explosions, Izuku gave the signal for his brown-haired partner to slip away. As explosions drew closer, the Midoriya noticed that the spider sense would sometimes switch between warning him of impending harm and the one warning him of impending doom. The green-haired boy needed to find a way to warn his friend in a natural way. He really wanted to show off his abilities, however. If there was something that could kill them, he needed to warn his friend. The green-haired student readied himself for the up-and-coming attack. As Buck go rounded the corner, he noticed something was off. He was familiar enough with his friend to notice the change in demeanor. Something changed in his green-haired friend. Whatever that something was, it was clearly taking his mind off of the task at hand. Oi, Deku! Quit daydreaming and focus! Our idol is watching us! 
Do you really want your first impression of us to be lousy? Bakugo shouted at his friend as he fired off an explosion towards the green-haired boy. Don't be a coward, Deku. Both of us made a promise to make sure what happened to us doesn't happen again. Why don't you pull the pin on your gauntlet then? Everyone knows you will need a larger and more powerful explosion to hinder me. Deku said as he hoped his friend would catch onto the hint as Deku dodged to the left. He warned us about what would happen if the enemy would predict our movements. Gatsuki unleashed another explosion as he heard what his friend said. The blonde-haired boy remembered that his friend was aware of the purpose of the gauntlets. It was also the one time where he knew the green-haired student experienced the warning that something was life-threatening. The atomic blonde set off a widespread explosion as he contacted his teammate. Hey, Four Eyes! Something is wrong! Keep an eye out for anything out of the ordinary. Something dangerous seems to be in the area. The explosive blonde said as he jumped back from Midoriya. I'm going to try something excessive and see what happens. You ask for this, nerd. Don't complain. As the blonde-haired student was preparing to unleash a powerful explosion, Uraka made it to where the bomb was. She decided to wait for her teammate to show up. However, Ida was monologuing in an attempt to get into character. This caused the brunette to let out a chuckle that gave her position away. The blue-haired boy turned around and looked in her direction. I've been expecting you, hero. In preparation for your arrival, I cleaned the room so that you wouldn't be able to use your quirk on anything, Ida said as he tried to sound like a villain. You made the mistake of coming here alone. The brown-haired hero student tried to use his monologue as a distraction. As she got closer, the boy with glasses used his quirk to fine move the bomb out of the way. At that moment in time, he got the warning about something being off. He had realized it before the warning came through, but something was wrong with the bomb. The bomb felt heavier, almost like something had been added to it. Back ago, I think someone changed the bomb. It feels heavier. It's a slight difference, but it's a difference. The boy with glasses said. Before he could say anything else, a massive explosion tore through the building. The building started to shake as if it suffered massive damage. Both Uraka and Ida fell over as they were caught off guard by the massive explosion. Midori managed to dodge to the side the moment he found a hallway that allowed him to move away from the explosive blast. Despite this, the green-haired boy had lost part of his hero suit in the blast. Hey nerd, it seems the bomb was altered in some way. We should find a way to get rid of it. I would rather lose this than risk someone getting seriously injured. The yellow-haired boy snarled. Besides, All Might didn't call me out for the excessive use of force. We might have been cut off from him. Without missing a beat, Midoriya simply started running towards the location of his teammate. Bakugo followed suit. Both of them realized that fighting would be a waste of time if the bomb was the real danger. The people in the observation room breathed a sigh of relief as the four students noticed that something was amiss. However, everyone was concerned if they noticed it too late. It seems the spider trained the blonde-haired boy and the green-haired boy well. I suppose this wouldn't be that entertaining if they couldn't pick up something this obvious. <laughs> Dr. Octopus said with a laugh. Let those four know this was a greeting from Dr. Octopus if they survive. There aren't many heroes who can fight us. <laughs> The line went dead once again. This time everyone panicked as they noticed the timer on the bomb dropped to around 30 seconds. This terrified everyone as they no longer had an opportunity to signal for help. Meanwhile, as the two boys reached the bomb, Deku noticed that his spider sense started to go haywire. It was almost as if the danger was closer now. Suddenly, the radio flared to life. I was finally able to get through to you four. A villain managed to swap the fake bomb out for a real one. All Might said, sounding a bit panicked. Please get out of the building as quickly as possible. You only have about 30 seconds left. Bakugo, we will discuss what you did later. The four students looked at each other with wide-eyed expression. This was a terrifying moment for them. They didn't expect a villain to do something like this. Midoriya quickly grabbed the Ruraka and jumped out of the building. Bakugo grabbed Ida and blasted his way out of the building as well. Their classmates watched. 
as the timer hit zero, the screen went blank as the bomb went off. The symbol of peace sent a signal to the principal that there was an attack on his students. He started to sprint out of the room to see what happened. Just as he left, the sound from the explosion finally reached them. Thank you all for indulging yourselves in all of this information thus far. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, there are a few more things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. Firstly, I'd like to thank our sponsors. Secondly, I'd like to thank all of our YouTube members. Thirdly, if you're in the mood for some great storytelling, We the Celestials has you covered. Our We the Celestials, My Hero Academia, and Naruto What If channels retell the story of their namesake anime with a twist. Check out if you're interested. Fourthly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in today's excellent content production. Their details can be found in the description below. Lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at We the Celestials, I'd like to extend out an invitation to join the team. The only caveat is uh, that we only accept members from 16 years old to join our crew. You can sign up for whichever category fulfills your interests by joining the recruitment discord using the link in the description below. We're always looking for members to join us. Well, that's it for today's video. So thank you all for watching and have a great day.